All right. So this is the uh, Lego Nomadic V8 engine made from all clear plastic. Um, so I wanted to change a couple of things since the last time I showed this to you. Um, the, the last time you seen it, maybe you noticed it, maybe you haven't. I, I know one guy did in, in the comments in the in the last video, um, and that is the fact that the crankshaft bends when it runs. Um, and it was it was mentioning how that makes it lose power. Or it's not very good, you know, blah 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 blah. And to an extent, he's right. Um, it it is causing it to lose power, um, but it's not directly causing it to lose power. If that makes sense. The, the reason it's um, causing it to lose power was when the crankshaft bends in the in the middle due due to a uh, load and everything. Um, the metal for you know, you know, the middle four cylinders um, weren't working properly. The, the The way this engine works is it uses tire valves in, in the top of each cylinder. I, I have them threaded into the cylinder head there. And so um, when when it's running, the, the piston's job is to, when it reaches top dead center, it opens the tire valve and that lets air into the expansion chamber and it pushes the piston back down but when the middle four cylinders aren't coming up you know the middle four pistons aren't coming up all the way they aren't opening the valve as far or sometimes not at all and it would be only running on you know four and a half cylinders or, or whatever so now it, it, having the crankshaft bend like that wasn't going to damage anything it wasn't going to hurt anything um, because it's you know it's plastic it's it's it can bend but I didn't really want it to bend. I, I was, it was always my plan to have some kind of um, bearing in the middle of the crankshaft to support it, but I never did. Um, I mean, at the time I just wanted to get it running, just, just to, you know, out of excitement, wanted to see it run. Um, but I finally got around to doing it, and it's taken me this long because I had to redo it like 10 times, something like that, no joke. Um, the, I, I, re, I rebuilt the center of the crankshaft um, a good three or four times, and then I rebuilt the center support bearing that I made three or four times, or, or whatever it was. I, I lost track at this point. Um, but anyways, I am at the point where I'm ready to move on, and maybe eventually someday I would like to build a throttle for it. Um, I'm not sure when I'll do that or how I'll do it. I tried doing it once, but it failed. So I just kind of used the air gun as a throttle. Anyway, so let me show you what I have here. So this is our crankshaft in the middle. And if you can make it out, you can see the custom pieces that I've been making. Let's see, I can get the focus. I wish it would focus. Thank you. So as you can see, the center of the crankshaft is uh, not a traditional Lego piece anymore. Um, this is what it would uh, this is what it used to look like here. And it was just a normal stock um, little 180 degree 180 180 degree Jesus uh, you know crank throw separator. So <clears throat> what I did to Finally, get it working is, is um the let me show you the first time I made it. So the first time I made it, I took uh, I took one of these the the normal stock pieces, uh, and then I um, put a bunch of glue around the outside and in the center of it, and tried to um, uh, cut out the center of it like so. This one is broken. This is the the second attempt I had made. This is the the no. I'm sorry. This is the third attempt I made. This is the best one. So as you can see, it's broken. Um, it's missing this half of it, but again, it, you, you can see the, the, the basic shape I was going for. And the, the center bearing surface there in the middle um, was um, to the exact same size as, as the, the peg, the normal Lego diameter of the pegs and everything, so that, that's what I tried going for. Um, the first um, center support bearing that I made uh, yeah, was this one here. I, I had taken um, one of these pieces here, um, except it was a gray one, and I just cut the bottom off and used the bottom 
like that, if that makes sense. So it, so it can be that way. Um, but the problem with this one was uh, all it did was just break. Every time I would glue it, it would break again, and it would flex, and it wouldn't do very much of anything. So I tried gluing a piece of aluminum on the bottom. That did nothing. So I got sick of that. My second attempt of that bearing was this, which was one that I had made out of styrene. The bearing surface itself is um, real Lego. It's it, because I, I find that the, that works the best. Um, but this didn't last very long either. Um, as you can see, this is the outer edge of it that's supposed to screw into the bottom of the block. I'll show you in a minute. Um, so that finally broke. And so my last attempt at that, which is the attempt that I'm still using now, is this. This is um, this was made from. Uh, I don't have an example piece, but it's a Lego beam. It was a, I think a seven hole long or however you measure it in Lego. I don't know, but I just cut it up and that's what I made there. As for the the center piece of the crankshaft, how I made that, how, how that's finalized was I had used um, two of these crankshaft pieces here, the the normal uh, pieces here, and what I did was I had cut off the the pegs from 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 these from these uh, oval looking pieces here and then uh, on on the both of them I'll do the same thing to both and then I would take a really really sharp and pointy exacto knife and cut out that shape the the shape of the peg uh in the oval so that I can get um so I can convert this from a male end to a female end on, on both sides here. Um, and so that way I could take a section of uh, rod just like this and have it go through. And, and, the re and the reason why I did it to both of them instead of just leaving the one and putting it like that was because I did that at first and that broke. So the reason why I, I put one of these in the center of it was so I can um, actually weld it uh, together via a soldering iron. Um, and so that's what you see as an example here. If the camera would focus, please, oh dear God, please. Thank you. Um, as you can see, it's, it, it's ugly, but I mean, it works. And of course, I did the same thing for the center one there. I didn't do it on, the la on, the, um, on, on this one as it's still holding, so I'm kind of waiting for that one to break but whatever so yeah now, you, you might be able to see it but this thing's all oily and everything and um, what I've been using for lubrication is uh, just some transmission fluid um, I, I see a lot of people who make these Lego engines and they like to use um, like silicone spray like W40 silicone spray and I mean yeah that works great but I mean the problem with it is although it's it's oil it um, it does. I don't say evaporate, but it kind of goes away after a while, and it kind of leaves this sticky surface and stuff, and it it, it it doesn't work. So I made the switch to transmission fluid, and um, that seems to work great. I mean, I mean, it 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 stays for a very long time. It does a tremendous job at lubricating, and um, yeah. Now, I know there are going to be a lot of people out there who say, oh, but you can't use real oil because it'll it'll mess up the O-rings that you use for your piston rings. Um, I mean, I've been doing this for like the last several months, and I don't know. Can you see anything wrong with them? I know I don't. So, whatever. Anyways, let me uh, put it together, lube it all up, and uh, give you what you want, show you how it revs.
All right, cool. We're all lubed up, all put together right. Let's see how it runs. Now, every single time I would come up with a new way to make each of these pieces, um, I would immediately run down to the garage, plug it in, turn on the camera, and explain this whole video, and see if it works, and then it would immediately break on camera. Alright, plug her in here. What the fuck was that? Oh, Jesus Christ. The second this thing is on camera, I swear to God, it, it, it breaks. That was convenient, wasn't it? That was very convenient. So, hopefully, it doesn't break this time. Alright, I have my compressor set at 90 PSI. So let's plug her in and let her rip here. That's about as high as an RPM as I want to go. 